Ladies and gentlemen, another day, another drama in the world of chess. This one has been developing for several weeks here at the end of 2023, and I've waited a little while to present it to all of you because new developments are coming out every single day, but I think I'm ready. Here we go. This drama surrounds the final two spots to play in the FIDE Candidates Chess Tournament. The Candidates Tournament is an eight-player tournament, a double round robin with 14 games, and the winner of that tournament qualifies to challenge for the World Chess Championship. Winning the Candidates basically secures you close to a million extra dollars, and obviously a lot of prestige and sponsorship. That's just how the chess world has always been set up. The two most elite and prestigious events are the Candidates and ultimately the World Chess Championship match. Now, this year, it is a nightmare. It is a disaster. And I'm going to show you why. Here we go. So let's first talk about who has already made it and what the format is. Very simply, the person that ran, that was the runner up in the World Chess Championship match prior, Yanni Pomnishinao, has a spot. Now, Magnus Carlsen has a spot because he won the World Cup. He might decline that spot and it would go to fourth place finisher in the World Cup, Nijat Abasa from Azerbaijan. Two other gentlemen by the names of Pragnananda and Fabiano Caruana also qualified from the World Cup. Vidit and Hikaru qualified from the Grand Swiss. This year there was a big tournament called the Grand Swiss. If you got first or second, you qualified. And then we have two spots. One is the highest rated player as of January 1st, 2024. And the other one is the circuit winner. The FIDE circuit is an interesting concept and let me just summarize it for you on full screen, because the truth is, I don't think anybody really understands what the circuit is. Essentially, the FIDE circuit is a weighted calculating system where you take the five strongest tournaments that you played in a year with your best performances, and that adds up to something, and you lead the, the, the circuit board. So right now, what that looks like, the FIDE circuit board, which I believe I have for you here, is a list and a leaderboard. And right now it's Caruana, but if you remember, Caruana already made it. So we don't count Caruana. We have Gukesh, Anish Giri, Wesley So, Arjun Eregaisi. And you'll look at their scores here, and these are their performances, and, you can, and, and all of this is calculated in a super weird table. The amazing team at chess.com summarized it for me. Each tournament awards points based on strength, which is called TAR. Simply put, if the TAR is 2650, first place is 15 points. You can screenshot this and read it if you'd like. I'm not gonna read it to you because I don't wanna insult your intelligence, but essentially the way it works is there are a series of tournaments that determine who wins a certain event at a certain average rating, and that person can overtake on the circuit leaderboard. Now, what I just showed you there, Gukesh overtaking a niche, happened today. That happened today because of a chess tournament that was held in India in Chennai. Anish Giri was the leader of the circuit until today, December the 21st of 2023. There is one tournament remaining that is eligible for the FIDE circuit, and it is the Rapid and Blitz World Championship that begins in about five or six days. So crazy stuff, but that's, just, that's the beginning. That is the beginning of all of this drama. Allow me to tell you the story of the final two candidate spots this year. Here's a look. Uh, on the 2700 chess website of the top players in the world. Magnus Carlsen, Fabiano Caruana, Hikaru, they all qualified. Magnus doesn't want to play the candidates. He doesn't want to play the candidates, not a fan of the format. He's withdrawing from the cycle. Dingley Ren is the world champion. Jan has made it. We are looking at spots 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Those are the highest rated players in the world eligible to qualify as of January 1st. Wesley So. 2757. Ali Reza Farouja, 2756. Lenier Dominguez Perez from United States, 2751 and a half. Karyakin, I, he's not playing a lot uh, as of late, but he's 2750. And Anish Giri's 2749. Now, those are the protagonists of our story. And this story begins in the Singfield Cup. This was a tournament held in St. Louis not too long ago. And these were the final standings. Fabiano won the event, which is why Fabiano, if you remember in the circuit, is destroying the circuit. Fabiano Caruana is the biggest Chad on the planet 
because this man has qualified to the candidates like six different ways, okay? This man is a monster. And look, you, you look, he's the only other player in the world rated 2,800 right now. So he, he's really a beast. But second place was Lanier Dominguez Perez. And then it was Wesley So. And this is where the drama begins because all of a sudden, Lanier Dominguez was one of the highest rated players in the world despite not playing a lot of chess. And Wesley was very close. And Firuja was at the bottom. Firuja got second to last at the Singfield Cup. There was only nine players because Duda withdrew. He had a, he had a health concern. So wishing Duda all the best. Firuja tanked. And if you look at Firuja's recent tournaments, which we will get into in a moment, I think they, they will show up here. Um, he had a rough event. He lost a lot of points, did Firuja. I think there's a way to look at this, but uh, I, I might have to, I, I don't know where you're supposed to click. But Firuja struggled and he lost a lot of rating at the Singfield Cup. So all of a sudden it became a wide open race. Now, while that was happening, in London, December 1st, 2023, Gukesh got third place. You will remember that Gukesh was trying to overtake Anish Giri. So while London is being played and while the Grand Chess Tour is happening, we have a bunch of jostling. We have a bunch of people going for different spots. And this is where it all started. Okay? This is where it all began. First, Chris Bird, who's an international arbiter, tweeted, So Fide Chess at the last minute have added that to be eligible for the rating spot, you have to meet Circuit Regulation 3.2. Apparently, the international governing body of the game, FIDE, made a small change that basically said, for Dominguez to be eligible for the candidates, for Dominguez to be eligible to play the candidates, he has to play, and I will take you here, he has to play not more than two tournaments in the same country. If this rule is not respected, the player is not eligible, so literally a month before the deadline, this is what, this is what, I don't know exactly if that was when that happened, but this is what I was seeing on socials. The international governing body of the game said you actually can't just spam tournaments in your own country to farm your rating. So you know what he did? He went to Barcelona. I think this tournament is in Barcelona. I might be wrong. He went to Spain. No, it's in Formentera. Oh, uh, oh no, it's in, no, no, it's in Barcelona in December, right here. So this man, Lanier, after basically just vibing the entire year, gets second place and says, you know what? If I can't play in my home country, I'm going to Barcelona. <laughs> I'm going to Barcelona. That's what I'm going to do. Um, incredible. So he goes to Barcelona. And Lanier goes to play a tournament in Barcelona because he wants to gain rating in order to make the candidates. And that's completely, I mean, it's completely legit, completely legit thing to do. That, that, that is the rule. They say that the person that is the highest rated as of January 1st is eligible. You will remember, Lanier was just a couple of points away, right? So, of course, he's justified. He goes there. Now, what happens when Lanier goes to Barcelona? Well, what happens when Lanier goes to Barcelona, I have a couple of other games here for you, is in the very second round of the event, he is playing a FIDE Master with a rating of 2337 from America, Lanier plays a very combative Sicilian defense. His opponent plays Rook G1, which is called the Freak Attack, okay, of the Nidor variation. And we get into a very big battle because that's what you're supposed to do. Lanier is literally 408 points higher rated than his opponent. But he needs every... When you beat a person with a 400 point gap, you get 0.8. That is the rule. You get 0.8. Well, what happens is Lanier gets into an extremely complicated game against the young man. And, 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 and gets a very bad position. Like, he, he gets a position here where the computer was saying that he, was, he, he might even be losing on a high depth. Like, he, he played in, in some very, very, very provocative way, and the computer was giving a... This, this computer on a low depth, for some reason, is not giving such a big evaluation, but I'm pretty sure uh, the position was, uh, was, was quite bad. And I think here was the biggest evaluation. It was like FG, it was very complicated, but it was normal stuff, okay? And so what ended up happening was they traded a bunch of pieces and uh, this is a drawn endgame. Like Rook Bishop 4, Rook Bishop 4, opposite color. And uh, it went on for a little while and Lanier tried to win, but 
you, you can't win this position. I don't care if your opponent gets hit in the head with a baseball bat. This is an impossible position to win. And they agreed to a draw. And then Lanier drew somebody else. And then Lanier withdrew from the tournament. So in an unbelievable turn of events, Lanier traveled to Barcelona in order to play in this event to gain rating, but he ended up losing rating. He ended up losing a couple, he drew a couple of games and that lost him points. And the crazy thing about chess is you need to stay top 10. The thing is, historically, if you're not top 10 in chess, you will not get invited to major tournaments. So Lanier has more of an interest in not falling to like 14th. He'd rather, and so what he did is he withdrew. He withdrew after playing this game over here, which is crazy. Like that is, it's crazy that the top players in the world can, like they don't even have to finish a tournament because there's so much pressure on them to stay in the top 10. Maybe that shouldn't even be allowed, right? So that is, that is a whole crazy thing. Lanier goes to try to chase the rating spot. He ends up drawing a couple of games, losing points. He, he now doesn't want to play in the, in the tournament anymore, which is crazy. And then there was this. This was bananas. This was announced on December the 11th, which if you remember, the London Chess Classic ended December 10th. This tournament was in the works for a long time. This is called the Chennai Grandmasters. And the tournament is a monstrous event. The Ratinf, aka rating average, is 2711. Okay? Massive sponsors. Gukesh and Arjun have a chance to make the FIDE Circuit Spot candidates. Parham Maksudlu can have a good event and catch up. Now, apparently, Anish Giri over here and Wesley So were invited to play the event. Wesley So was in Toronto playing the, uh, the Champions Chess Tour and Anish Giri has a family and he has to prepare for the World Rapid and Blitz. And you will remember Anish Giri also is 2749. Like he might not want to risk it. So let me remind you why this is important. They organized the tournament that according to the FIDE circuit is very, very, very strong. You will remember that to organize a tournament, you have to take a very high standard rating, and that is how it is calculated. So the pressure was on Gukesh to win this tournament. If Gukesh wins this tournament of monster opponents, if he clutches it out, he is going to the candidates probably. He is going to take the third spot. And as of today, the final day of the event, he won the tournament. So did Arjun Erigaisi tying for first. So if you look at the FIDE circuit leaderboard, Erigaisi is really close. If he has a really good rapid and blitz, he might actually get up here. But for now, it's Gukesh. And this is the first start of the problems. And I will pause here and just discuss, okay? Let me discuss. I think the entire cycle of qualifying to the candidates and ultimately playing for the world championship might be overdue for an overhaul. It is good in theory, but we are still the only sport where our massive biggest events are determined in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Not just a one-on-one -on -one battle, a Grand Prix, an eight-person double round robin Hunger Games style event. We make eight players play 14 games against each other, and then the winner emerges to play the world champion. No other sport does anything similar. Tennis, every individual sport, there's a circuit, there is a leaderboard, but there's small tournaments and big tournaments. And what I don't like is that you can announce a tournament anytime. That should be strange. Even though the Chennai Grandmasters is 100% legitimate, listen to me, it is 100% legitimate. What I am about to show you is not. What I am about to show you is something that is only applicable in the rules that they currently exist, and it's kind of a hate the game, don't hate the player. But can we just agree that it, you cannot... It, it, if we're going to be a credible sport, I don't think you can announce tournaments in the middle of the year. I think they have to be determined beforehand. Now, according to that tournament, and according to Sagar Shah and Ishgiri, etc., they have been planning this tournament for a very long time. And they are 100% reputable individuals. 
And I have no problems with Gukesh going to the candidates. That is not what I'm saying at all. But we, if we're going to be a credible sport, like, can you imagine somebody in tennis wants to overtake, like, number one? That's, that's where it gets a little bit weird for me. And where it really gets weird is what I'm about to show you. Because then they announced Ali Reza's Firuja, Ali Reza Firuja's Race to the Candidates Tournament. This is the ultimate, this is the ultimate bending, but completely legally applicable situation in the rules. They organized a round-robin tournament where Ali Reza Firuja is going to play three people in a double round-robin. They are all older grandmasters, Fedorchuk, uh, Shekhachev, and Jibugadze, 2439, 2506, 2546. Ali Reza Firuja has to play all of these guys, and I think, as of today, he is now 5 out of 5, and he is now higher rated than Wesley So. Firuja is now higher rated than Wesley So because of this tournament that they announced literally two weeks before January 1st. The Chennai Grandmasters compared to that is a, it, 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 it's, not even, it's not even comparable. The Chennai Grandmasters has a tournament average of 27-11. It is 100% a legitimate tournament. It's just unfortunate they announced this tournament on December 11th. That's my old, like, I, this tournament should have been on the calendar from the beginning. Can, I hope we can all agree on that. But this, but this is wild. And this is why this whole system <laughs> is, is problematic. Because technically what Ali Reza Firuja is doing is 100% within the rules. It's just probably going to be frowned upon and cause a bit of a ruckus. And then the international governing body of chess said, Today, on December 18th, the mini matches featuring Ali Reza Firuja began in France. The six game tournament fits Perugia, uh, pits for, <laughs> fits Perugia, pit, f oh my god, pits Firuja against three veteran players with an average of 2497. Concerns have arisen regarding the tournament's potential purpose, whether it was orchestrated to aid Mr. Firuja in boosting his rating for potential qualification, which is really crazy they would think that, considering it's called Ali Reza Firuja's Race to the Fight. <laughs> what? Like, at least Chennai named the tournament Chennai Grandmasters and not, will Gukesh and Eric Icy qualify to the game? <laughs> Listen, there's a big Indian chess audience, all right? I... <laughs> <laughs> Look at these Sherlock Holmes out here! The International Chess Federation would like to point out, according to the point four clause of its rating regulations, FIDE reserves the right not to rate a specific tournament. What? FIDE has already sent an official request to the organizers of the event. We're going to carefully follow and investigate all aspects of the organization. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. And then the question comes out of there is no consistency. You did nothing when it was Ding Li Ren. Not only that, uh, Yan Yipomnishi tweeted, they did not bother to at least issue an official statement about the Chinese tournaments last year. Now enjoy the consequences. It serves it right. Okay, let's talk about it. I want you all to listen to me because YouTube is weird. I talk, you hear something different than what I'm saying. I have zero problems with the Chennai Grandmasters, and I have slightly more problems than that with what Firuja is doing, but almost none because it's in the rules. They did not do anything about this. So technically, I could go farm a 27, not really because that would be suspicious, but you get my point. This was all created because the regulations allow it. And it's also a problem because there is way too much emphasis on the candidates. Qualifying to the candidates in the World Chess Championship has way too much of an impact on a player's career. Maybe it should. Maybe it shouldn't. I don't know. But the point is, this is the system. This is the system. What Firuja is doing is completely legal. It's just, you know, questionable. What Ding Li Ren did last year. Remember the Ding Li Ren events? Sergei Karyakin last year was removed from the candidates 
due to social media activity during the Russia-Ukraine war. That's what happened. You may remember this, maybe not. Ding Li Ren could take his spot, but he did not have enough eligible games because Ding Li Ren did not travel during the pandemic. So Ding Li Ren played locally in China 27 games or something. But Ding Li Ren already had the spot. He just wasn't eligible because of the games played. It's a bit of a different situation than Firuja, who actively needs rating to overtake Wesley So. Wesley So could go play some games in St. Louis right now and overtake Firuja. The point is, this is a circus. The point is, how can we just have eligible tournaments submitted for candidate spots at the end of the year? It doesn't make any sense. What should be possible is if I'm close, I can go play a little tournament like somewhere and maybe I win it, maybe it'll, but that tournament was announced six months ago. This whole thing is craziness. It is craziness. Last year, Ding Li Ren had to do this, had to do this, because it was a crazy situation where Karyakin was removed from the candidates, and even then people had a problem with what Ding Li Ren was doing, because he just, he needed to play games locally against Chinese grandmasters, because he hadn't played enough games, because he couldn't travel during the pandemic. What's going on now is Firuja lost rating, and the only real way for him to gain it back just a little bit right before the end is to do this. And of all of those situations, this is the one I might have an issue with, but it's within the rules. You technically can do this because there's nothing in the regulation against it. So the international governing body of the game is literally adapting to the situation on the fly. I don't think a single person on earth even understands the FIDE circuit. Clearly some people do because they are able to organize tournaments. Gukesh has now overtaken Anish Giri because of the circuit, but there is one tournament remaining, which is the World Rapid and Blitz, which is going to happen at the end of the year. And Anish has an opportunity to, to overtake. But even today, the best player in the world, Magnus Carlsen, put out a tweet which said, I have no horse in this race, but in my opinion, the World Blitz is much harder to win and should therefore give more circuit points than World Rapid. Magnus is arguing that because the World Blitz has more rounds, it's more grueling and it's actually harder to win. Now the argument is, well, the World Rapid is technically closer to classical than, you know, Blitz, so it should count more. So nobody even, we're making this up on the fly. Like we're literally, everybody has an opinion. Nobody really understands what's going on. And, uh, and, 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 and meanwhile, C Squared Podcast put out this meme. Anish, Gukes, Alireza, and Wesley all battling each other and Fabi qualifying for the candidates in five different ways. <laughs> this is the best meme ever. This is incredible. This is awesome. Um, this is great. So, everybody had an opinion. Maxime Vachelagrov chimed in. Um, oh, the United States Chess Federation appealed for the event not to count. <laughs> I'm not sure the United States Chess Federation, after various things in 2023, can ask for anything. But, um, yeah, so the Federation here says it shouldn't count because they want Wesley So to make the candidates by rating. Right now, if all things ended without that event, Wesley So would have made the candidates by rating. Uh, but now it's Feruja. So Feruja has officially overtaken Wesley So. Uh, th that, that's where we are now. And today I tweeted, should I play Anish Giri in a few games over Christmas to make him eligible for the candidates? by rating. <laughs> so Anish Giri would need to beat me 10 times to get to 2760 and he would overtake Feruja. Okay, look, all of this is a, is a complete circus. That, that's my point. Like, I don't even, I mean, I've said so much in this video and yet I, I still feel like I, I, I don't even know what to expect or what point that I'm making. Um, I don't think that you should be able to organize tournaments three weeks before the deadline, but it's within the rules. And if you're going to organize something, what Chess Base India did and what Sagar Shah did was fantastic because they organized an ex the strongest chess tournament India ever had. So congratulations to them. Shout out to Sagar Shah. Shout out to Arjun Aragaisi, Gukesh, Hare Krishna, all the players that participated in that event. It was a great event. And massive congratulations to Gukesh who won it. In fact, Anish Giri congratulated him too. You know, as bittersweet as it must have been for Anish, who he was invited to play. That's what they said. Uh, I'm going to find it for you. I'm going to find it for you. There we go. So it's right here. It says, congrats to Gukesh on his much needed victory in Chennai. Rising up to the occasion is a great, great quality as a quality of a great champion. So look, 
that's fine. Like, what? Th that's fine. What The Ferruja thing is less fine, but it's still within the rules. And uh, Wesley might go organize some games in St. Louis, and I don't even I don't even know what's happening anymore. Um, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I mean, we, we need some help. This whole thing doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. I think right now, Ferruja is taking the spot from Wesley, and Gukesh is taking the spot from Anish. Because Fabiano already made it. Nuts. And Magnus doesn't want to play, so it's going to go to the guy that got fourth place in the World Cup. This is all insane. This is completely nuts. Um, that's all I have for you today. Very big drama. Uh, not, not, by the way, they might not rate the event. They might not rate the event. Oh my, can I just say that? Fide literally reserved the right not to rate the event. <laughs> we don't even know if it's going to count. This is nuts. Whole thing's nuts. Um, that's all I have for you today. So, get out of here.